Hi everyone, I'm Eric Auger from Red Hat and together with Yilio from Intel, we are going to talk about the new IOMMU FD user API and the adaptation of the QMU VFIO device on top of it. We will start by looking at a subset of the VFIO API which depends and relates to the IOMMU subsystem. Then we will talk about attempts we made to extend this API to support new features such as nested and virtual SVA. With this background, you should better understand how we came to the design of a new user API. We will present IOMMUFD, introduce the kernel skeleton RFC that implements it, and the few VFIO kernel patches added on top of it. Then we will address the QMU integration, what challenges it brings to adapt the QMU VFIO device on top of it. Then I will hand over to Yi, we will talk about nested and virtual SVS support on top of IOMMUFD, and eventually we will give some prospects and draw some conclusions. The VFIO API allows user space to have direct access to host DMA capable devices. VFIO guarantees the assigned device is put in a protected context so that the user initiated DMAs are prevented from doing any harm to the rest of the system. This relies on the strong assumption that the physical IOMMU protects the actual device. The API is group centric. The group is an IOMMU thingy. It is a minimal isolation granularity for the IOMMU. Devices that cannot be isolated from each other belong to the same group, while others belong to different groups. Associations between devices and groups can be discovered through this FS. Once a device is bound to the VFIO driver, a so-called VFIO group is created. This matches the IOMMU topology. If all the devices belonging to that group are bound to the VFIO driver or stop drivers, the group is considered as viable and can be attached to the so-called VFIO container. This container embodies the IO address space shared by all the groups attached to it. Only once the group is attached to the container, user space can get an FD to the VFIO device and program it. Now, since 2017, we have been trying to extend this API to support new features such as hardware nested paging and PESID. A set of new IOCTLs were proposed to handle PESID allocation, such as guest page table binding, cache invalidation, fault handling, PESID allocation. First, we work on the definition of an IOMMU user API, and we ended up tunneling this user API through the VFIO user API. This was contributed by Intel, Linaro, and Red Hat. The most difficult part was PASID support, actually. However, by this time, VDPA also needed to consume PASIDs. So different pass-through frameworks started to have the same needs and duplicate the same logic. First, a centralized driver was created to manage PASIDs, which was called slash dev slash IO acid, and then eventually discussions added towards putting also the IO page table management in the same driver instead of in a separate place. On top of that, the FIO IOMMU type one implementation has become bigger and bigger with the addition of new features, and this was not really scalable anymore. So devising a new driver may also give the opportunity to alleviate uh, the maintenance burden, but also overcome some uh, known shortcomings such as uh, duplicated log page accounting across containers and also bad virtual IOMMU performance with, nest with nested. So eventually, despite the efforts consumed on the VFIO integration and the fact that some parts were already upstream at kernel level, I'm thinking about the IOMMU user API, for instance, at the beginning of two, uh, 2021, we stopped developments around this VFIO integration and started discussions around a new user API for managing IO address spaces pointing to user memory. This new API is named IOMMUFD. It is separate from VFIO so that other drivers like VDPA can use it. After a long discussion threads and two spec proposals, RFC were sent on the mailing list. The first one, from uh, Intel and then um, new ones from Jason Gerntop uh, on March this year and a uh, few days uh, uh, before this presentation actually. And uh, so in the rest of the presentation, we are going to focus on uh, Jason's RFC and its integration in QMU. 
So it is also worth to mention that plenty of work has been done at kernel level to prepare the introduction, to prepare the, to prepare the transition towards uh, IOMM UFD. I'm typically thinking about uh, GMA ownership rework at the IOMMU subsystem level. So JSON CRFC proposes a new slash dev slash IOMMU char device. The associated file descriptor is called IOMM UFD. This is a container holding for uh, multiple IO, IO address spaces. Those are called IOS. They are managed through FD operations. An IOS represents a mapping between a set of IO virtual addresses onto a set of physical pages backing user memory. It can be shared between multiple subsystems like VDF IO and VDPA. Devices attached to IO address spaces, and this attachment is backed by a so-called hardware PT, hardware patch table, which acts as a wrapper onto the IOMMU domain. The current collaton introduces or is an involved infrastructure to manage the life cycle of those objects, so IOAS, device, hardware PT, infrastructure to store IOVAs, physical pages, their pinning, mappings between those, and also currently a few IOCTLs are exposed. So typically to allocate free IOASs, which returns IOS IDs, map and map IOVAs, and copy mappings from one IOS to the other. On top of that, a kernel API is also provided for external drivers like VFIO PCI to bind and bind devices to an IOMM USD. This returns a device ID and claim DMA ownership. This means a successful binding puts the IOMMU group into a security context, which isolates the DMA from uh, the DMA from the rest of the system. So in this uh, skeleton group, isolation is enforced implicitly. Also, um, an API is provided to attach a device to an IOS uh, through an hardware PT. Currently, an hardware PT is automatically created with an empty IO page table to match the VFIO block DMA state semantics. Also, an, IO, an hardware PT ID is returned. The current RFC does not expose any IOCTL able to manipulate it. However, the second part of this presentation will explain what, is it, what it is used for, sorry. On top of JSON's IOMMU FD skeleton, some additional patches were uh, needed to allow VFIO device to cooperate with the IOMMU FD subsystem. So he contributed those. First, uh, once bound to the VFIO driver, a device node now appears in CFS, and you can, open, you can open it without going through the legacy container group API described earlier. Then also two new IOCTLs were introduced to allow the binding of the device to a given IOMMU FD and the attachment of the device to an IOS within this IOMMU FD. So actually those patches weren't officially submitted to the mailing list, but they are available since the first RFC submission on this branch and the other branch provided by JSON. Now let's cover the adaptation of the existing QMU VFIO device on top of this new IOMMU FD user API. As IOMMU FD may not be a superset of VFIO IOMMU type one, both the legacy and the new implementation may need to coexist. The assumption is that new functionalities will be implemented only on top of IOMMU FD. The goal was to port most of the existing code on top of the new API. One of the first things uh, we did was to split the code into parts which are IOMMU agnostic and parts uh, which are IOMMU specific. This mostly relates to command.c file. In the IOMMU agnostic part, uh, you will find uh, all the code related to region interrupt management. This is the code that applies to the actual device. In the IOMMU related code, we try to isolate code that looks generic related to VFIO address space, memory listeners, from lower level code that manipulates the user API. One challenge is VFIO is a group centric API, whereas IOMMU FD is device centric. Conceptually, the VFIO container matches to the IOMMU FD IOS tuple. Devices sharing the same tables are attached to the same IOS within the same IOMMU FD. 
We turned the VFIO container into a base class derived into two implementations. So we needed to devise a class interface. The implementation of those interfaces is supposed to fully hide the API specific objects such as the container, the group, the IOS, and so on. At the moment, we have defined those few interfaces. You can see them on the left. Uh, this is likely to be extended and refined because we are currently missing some kernel pieces to implement some functionalities like reset or migration. For the user to be able to select one given backend, so the legacy one or the new IOMMUFD one, a new IOMMUFD object was introduced. To use the new backend, you instantiate such object referred to by a unique ID. And when you instantiate your VFIO PCI device, you reference this IOMMUFD ID. If you want to use a legacy backend, uh, you still use the old uh, command style. Note that management tools also have the possibility to open the IOMMUFD beforehand and pass the FD to the IOMMUFD object. While we have tested the legacy backend against non regressions the new IOMMUFD backend is not yet fully on par with the legacy one. As I explained earlier, we missed some kernel features to support peer-to-peer -peer or reset migration and so on. It's still unclear anyway um, whether we will have a full uh, compatibility uh, between the FIO IOMMU type 1 and IOMMU FD implementation. Uh, this is still to be discussed. The QMU integration at this stage is in RFC state and we have not received much comments. Uh, so bes besides the suggestion, I would say to, to use a separate IOMMU FD to select the backend. So we are definitively waiting for your feedbacks. And now I'm handing over to you for the second part of the presentation dedicated to new use case support. Yeah, thanks, Eric. I'm going to talk about uh, the new user cases. Actually, this is a uh, teamwork by Nicolin Chen from NVIDIA, Eric from Red Hat, Lupa Lu, and me from Intel. First, uh, I'd like to do a recap on Nest Translation. It is a feature implemented by hardware IMU and uh, mainly used by hardware assisted uh, virtual IMU. It enables GIOVA and VSVA. Most uh, platform vendors like uh, Intel, ARM, and AMD have already supported it. Next translation has two stage page tables. The result of the first stage page table is subject uh, to the second stage page table to get access to the final physical page. Platform vendors have, di have slight uh, differences in the next support. For example, the translation structure hierarchy is different between Intel VTD and ARM SMU. Intel VTD hardware uses the guest uh, stage one page table directly and the uh, next translation, while ARM SMU uses the guest uh, stage one page table by using the guest uh, context uh, descriptor table, which is also known as the passive table. So under next translation, PMU needs to associate uh, the stage one and the stage two page table to be nested. Uh, in IMFD, each page table has a hardware page table object uh, to represent them. Together with the IOS mentioned by Eric, QMU needs to manipulate uh, various hardware page tables and uh, IOS. Here, I'd like to explain how QMU manipulates them by an example. In the example, the GPA IOAS stores guest physical address to host physical address mappings. It is attached to device A, and uh, an auto HWPT is created. It stores the mappings from GPA IOAS. Device B is attached to S2 HWPT, and uh, it is allocated by QMU. It stores the mappings from GPA IOAS as well. While well, for device C, it is attached to S1 HTTPT, which is nesting on the S2 HTTPT. This enables the nested translation in IMU hardware for device C. And in long term, we may get rid of the uh, attached IOAS and only use attached HTTPT. Uh, then we will not have 
auto HWD. And but for now, we wanted to keep aligned with the existing VFR container. So auto HWD is still in use. After understanding how QMU manipulates the page tables for nest translation, uh, let's have a look on the software architecture for nest translation. Uh, first, uh, uh, IME driver needs to support uh, the nested type of domains, and uh, for ARM SMU, uh, even needed to handle the MSI doorbell properly under nested translation as the MSIs are translated by both physical SMU and uh, the virtual SMU and the nested. IMFD and the device driver, uh, like VFIO, needs to provide the UAPIs for uh, user space to set up and uh, destroy nested translation. With such a kernel SOM, QMU uh, enables nested translation by steps First, uh, querying uh, the IMU capability, then allocate uh, stage one and the stage two hardware page table per the guest uh, virtual IMU's configuration for the device. And the uh, last, attaching the device with the, with the allocated uh, hardware page table by device user interface. As in the previous slides, Intel VTD and ARM SMU has different nested support. So the stage one hardware page table on Intel VTD represents the guest IO page tables, while for ARM SMU, it pointers to the guest passive table, uh, namely the context description table. For nested translation, uh, Nicole Chang from NVIDIA, uh, Eric, and I have done a POC. Uh, it's functional, but uh, not fully clean up yet. Uh, in the POC, uh, stage one related uh, IMU operation is received by virtual IMU, uh, like allocating stage one uh, hardware page table. Uh, in the framework part, uh, IMU FD device is introduced to represent uh, a device on the uh, watch a new site. It provides uh, uh, callbacks like uh, attach HWPT, detach HWPT to support the attaching device to specific uh, uh, hardware page table. Uh, different device framework uh, may have their own implementation for the callbacks. And uh, long term, uh, we wish to move all the IMU related uh, code out of the device specific folders uh, has most of the logic may be shared, uh, such as uh, the memory listener, address space, and the dirty page tracking uh, code in the current uh, uh, device uh, pass through framework. Now uh, we have enabled the uh, nested translation, but we've only enabled uh, the GIOVA uh, usage. So let's go to talk about uh, enable uh, VSVA in the latest uh, IMFD framework. VSVA is uh, not a new thing. There are several uh, related topics in recent uh, current forms. Besides nested translation, VSVA also requires IMU fault reporting and passive support. In VSVA, the stage one page table is the guest CPU page table, which translates guest virtual address to guest physical address. And uh, this is also why uh, IMU photo reporting is required for VSVA. And the IMU fault includes recoverable fault and the non recoverable fault. The recoverable fault uh, is also known as PCI page request which is part of PCI address translation service. The IMU fault reporting uh, is generic across platform wonders. Uh, however, uh, the passive support is different due to hardware differences. Uh, for example, uh, Intel VTD, the guest passive table 
needs to be shadowed uh, to the host uh, passive table uh, under nested uh, translation. Uh, this means uh, guest uh, passive support requires hypervisor interception. Uh, but for ARM SMU, the guest uh, passive table is used by hardware uh, directly. So the guest passive support does not need a hypervisor interception. IMU fault reporting is based on the kernel IMU fault reporting framework. Uh, Lu Baolu from Intel is moving the fault reporting to be per IMU domain. Accordingly, IMU core also registers a fault handler for the hardware patch tables as the hardware patch table is a wrapper of IMU domain. The fault handler is responsible to report the fault to QMU and also store the fault data in the ring buffer. Uh, the report is done by event FD. QMU sets the event FD to the kernel uh, in the stage one hardware patch table allocation. Along with the stage one hardware patch table allocation, uh, fault uh, FD is also returned to QMU so that QMU can get uh, the data from uh, this fault uh, FD. Uh, after getting the fault data, uh, QMU IMU emulation code will inject the fault to the virtual machine per vendor spec. Uh, if the fault uh, is a recoverable fault, uh, QMU will uh, send a response back to hardware after guest uh, serves the fault. We still have open on on the PASTID support, especially for the PASTID virtualization. However, this slide wants to point out the necessary changes for it. Uh, MFD will need to provide the UAPI uh, for host PASTID allocation and map guest PASTID to host PASTID. Uh, in the MFD core, it needs to provide the kernel API for uh, PASTID uh, attachment and also API to uh, query guest uh, PASTID and the host PASTID. Uh, in the device driver side, for example, VFIO uh, needs to extend uh, the attach HWPT UAPI to support the PASTID. Uh, last but not least, uh, KVM uh, needs to provide the UAPI for updating the uh, VMX, VMCS, passive uh, translation table. And this is required for Intel uh, in Q command support. Uh, in QMU, uh, both uh, Intel VTD and uh, ARM SMU uh, emulation code uh, is going to be updated uh, to support uh, uh, the ML filter handling and uh, pass the capability for VSVA. And Intel uh, VirtualMU uh, further requires pass the uh, communication uh, with the device module. And there are some conclusions for this presentation. Uh, first, uh, IMFD is a major redesign. Uh, there are significant uh, rework at both kernel and uh, user space level. Uh, IMFD spec is still unstable, uh, especially for new features uh, like uh, PASID. And the feasibility of uh, VFL IM type 1 uh, deprecation is not uh, guaranteed at this point. And uh, there are lots of uh, kernel dependencies for QMU integration. Uh, like uh, clean ups, uh, VFI IMU code uh, reshuffles. Uh, most of them are not uh, merged yet. Uh, Nikolai Chen, uh, Lubalu, Eric, and I are working on prototyping uh, nested uh, and the VSVA uh, on Intel and ARM. Um, discussions need to happen 
uh, to integrate uh, other vendors like uh, AMD. Uh, other VFIO uh, IMU backend, such as VFIO IMU SPAPR uh, TCE, uh, needs to be addressed uh, at some point uh, in future. Um, other new features uh, like uh, uh, page request uh, for VFIO IMU Type 1 are uh, blocked waiting for IMU FD up soon. Uh, there are some uh, uh, references for people who wanted to know more about this project. Uh, like uh, there is some uh, mailing list uh, fetch series uh, prior to IMFD, and uh, also to informative threads for the IMFD UAPI discussion. Also, some fetch series uh, post uh, IMFD discussion. Uh, like uh, the first uh, IMFD RFC from me, uh, the IMU FD generic interface RFC uh, from Jason Gansopper, and uh, the the QMU IMU FD adoption from Eric and me. Uh, also, uh, wanted to clarify that the GitHub branches pasted here uh, are based on. Uh, MFD generic uh, interface uh, RFC v1. Uh, we are in progress to replace uh, everything on top of v2. And there are also some uh, related uh, talks at uh, various uh, conferences uh, in recent years, uh, which may be helpful as well. Uh, in the last, uh, thank you for your attention on this presentation. Uh, if any questions, uh, please feel uh, free to let uh, Eric and me know. Uh, 